Welcome to this webinar, which is on the subject of putting together simple touches of spliced. I'm going to look specifically at how you put together touches for practices, rather than uh, composing quarter peels or peel compositions, although the basic principles are the same. The aim of, is that if you need a touch of spliced for a six or eight bar practice, you would be able to put something together and call it. To get the most from this, you'll already be able to call touches and ring a few surprise methods. I'm not going to explain terms such as lead end, above work or coursing order, but hopefully, even if you don't understand those, the meaning will become clear. Let's get started. There's an important feature of methods that makes this work, and it's to do with lead ends. Just in case it's not obvious, look at the lead ends of plain Bob and little Bob plain courses. See how this first lead of plain Bob lead end 135264 is the same as the second lead end of little Bob 135264. The fourth lead there of plain Bob 142635 is the same as the third lead of little Bob 142635. So these two methods have the same lead end rows but in different orders. Now that is absolutely critical because it means you can use a combination of different methods to end up in the same place. Methods which have the same lead ends as plain Bob are called regular methods. Most methods you ring other than Granter and Stedman will be regular methods and will exhibit this feature. We say that they have plain Bob lead ends. Okay, let's have an example. How could we combine plain and little? Probably the first spliced you need. So compare just a list of the lead ends there. Notice how one lead of little Bob has the same effect as how many leads of plain Bob. So one, six, four, five, two, three is three leads of plain Bob. So all you need for a course of plain and little is two leads of plain and one lead of little. That adds up to five. Five leads of plain Bob comes round. So start with a lead of plain. Then have a lead of little, which takes you to one, four, two, six, three, five. And then another lead of plain gets you back to rounds. I tend to think of touches of splice like this by going through the blue line in my head or out loud, starting with a tenor. So if I was sixth place plain Bob, after a lead, I'd be dodging five, six up and become fifth place bell. A lead of little Bob would take me round to three, four down. And from three, four down, with a lead of plain, I get back to the home position. You can check that for any bell. They will all end up in the right place. So we have just composed our first touch of spliced plain, little, plain. Does it matter what order you have those three leads? Look what happens if you start with the little bob. First lead end would be one, six, four, five, two, three. Then shifting to plain bob will leave you just two leads to get to the end. So now it doesn't matter what order the leads are provided as long as they add up to five. Let's look at another example. What if you only had one lead of plain Bob? We're going to start with it. How many leads of little Bob would you need? So that lead of plain Bob has taken us to 135264. And you can see, hopefully, on the list of lead ends of little Bob, 135264 is the end of the second lead. So if you then continued with three leads of little Bob, it would get back home. Again, you can give it in blue line terms. From the tenor, the sixth, the end of the lead of plain Bob becomes fifth place bell plain. Go into little Bob, fifth place little Bob becomes goes to three, four down, in and out, three, four up, and finally five, six down comes home. Another way of thinking about this is to use a bit of algebra. So P, one lead of plain Bob, little Bob, a lead of little Bob is equivalent to three leads of plain Bob because it gets you to the same place. So P, L, 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 if you add them together, that's 10 leads of plain, divisible by five, so it comes round. If you ran 10 leads of plain Bob, of course, 
it would come round. Next, we are going to consider whether any touch without bobs can be longer than five leads. Now, you might like to think about that for a moment. That touch is longer than five leads. Three leads of plain bob, four leads of little bob, and it comes round at the end. However, there's a problem. There are repeating leads here. You'll notice that some of those lead ends appear twice. Now, it's not strictly illegal on a practice night to repeat leads, but it's not a habit to get into and it's easily avoidable, so we tend not to do it. So all touches of spliced without cause are going to need to be shorter than a plain course, unless all the leads have the same lead end order. And think about a practice night touch. Touches that are shorter than a plain course of Bob Minor aren't really much use, especially on six. So let's look at putting together something longer, which means we need to use bobs. Now, this is a page from the Ringing World Diary, which is particularly incomprehensible to learners. These are touches of plain Bob Minor. Now, you may not think that the starting point for touches of spliced is touches of Bob Minor, but it is. Now, the basic principle of this is that you start with the touch you're going to use, as in the call, and then you fit methods into it to get you from call to call. Basically, you need to have a lead end that gets the tenor to the right place for you to make the call. Now, the touch I'm going to use, which I've highlighted there, is wrong home, wrong home. Wrong home, wrong home is a sort of a utility two course touch. Now, the tenor is not affected by these calls, and that's helpful, at least at first. Now, there's an important principle here again. Just as we realise that provided all the methods have plain bob lead ends, and all the methods we usually ring do, then combining methods together will always work and come round, provided you get the tenor back to the home position. And the same is true for touches. The touch will work irrespective of what methods you're ringing, provided the touch works for the tenor in the usual way. So if you call wrong home, wrong home, it doesn't matter what methods you have used to get there. It will work. We're now going to consider how to fit the methods into this touch. So we'll go back to plain little. Wrong home, wrong home is two courses. So in each course, we need an arrangement of leads, plain and little so that the tenor gets to both the wrong position and the home position, the wrong position being five, six up, the home position being five, six down. Now, this is the last time we're going to look at full lead ends. You can accept that if the touch works and we have leads which get us to the calling position we want, then this will work. We don't need to prove it all the time by writing out all the lead ends. So see how in our basic plain little plain course, the tenor is very helpfully getting to the wrong and home positions. It dodges five, six up at the end of the first lead. It dodges five, six down at the end of the third. So if we call a bob at the end of the first lead and at the end of the third lead, that gives us a course, wrong home. We could repeat that, give us a two course touch. Let's look at a different calling for the second course. We established earlier that we could use one lead of plain and three of little bob. So then you think, what orders can we arrange those leads so that we definitely get the tenor to the wrong position? The home position is a given. Those four leads are always going to get us back home. But they don't all get the tenor to the wrong position. Here are the four different orders in which we can arrange one lead of plain and three of little. Do all of those orders enable us to put calls in at wrong and home? No, the third one doesn't get the tenor to displace bell. All the others do. You might want to pause this and think about it in terms of the line the tenor follows through those courses. So back to our selection for our second course, we could go P Bob LLL Bob. We'll start with two leads of little, 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 bob, plain, little, bob. Let's have the second one because it gives us one more change of method. And there we have it, 
two courses of Plain and Little with different callings in each course, with our touch being Wrong Home Wrong, sorry, Wrong Home Wrong Home, which we know works because it works for Plain Bob. Now let's introduce another Plain Minor method and a different touch. We will put together a touch of Plain, Little and St Clements and imagine our tower captain has asked for a couple of courses or about 10 leads. So we think to ourselves, 10 leads. Wrong home, wrong home might not be enough. So let's select a three course touch and then have shorter courses to fill it out. And the simple three course touch is three homes. We're not proud, this is practice night and we just want it to work. And half the band won't know what you're calling anyway. So you'll have minor deity status just from calling a touch of splice with bobs in. So for a bit of variety, we think how many different ways can we combine these three lead end orders to get courses? Now you could of course ring a whole course of plain with a bob at the end, then a whole course of little, then a whole course of St Clement's, but that's not really spliced. We could go back to our algebra and then we'll see that St Clement's is equivalent to four leads of plain bob. You can also think of it as minus one. It puts us back one on the list of leads. So what combinations add up to five? Or you could think about the blue line. What play spells added together would get you back to the home position? Well, there's a two lead course available. Can you spot that? Plain and St. Clements. We'll come round. We could have our PLP course or our PLLL -L course. What if you started with a lead of Little Bob and then called St Clements? How long a course would that be? Well, Little Bob will get you to 164523, which is the second lead end of St Clements there. So you'd need three leads of St Clements. LSSS. -S -S. Is there a course that can combine a lead of each? At least one lead of each? There is, that's that one. So we have a selection of courses to choose from. Uh, and to get to the tower captain's 10 leads and get the, uh, the full marks, we could call at first course plain St. Clements, then the second course is little, three leads of St. Clements, and then plain three leads of little Bob. Now we could call those courses in different orders. We could mix the order of the methods in each course. Basically, we have composed a 10 lead touch of three spliced plain minor, and we are well on our way to greatness. Now I'm going to move on to show you how to apply these principles in the wonderful world of spliced treble dodging minor. Here are the six most commonly wrong surprise minor methods, so we'll focus on touches using these. Another thing to understand now is which of these methods have the same lead end orders? Cambridge, Beverly and Surfleet can be interchanged at will. London and Cambridge might feel very different, but they have the same lead end order. And Norwich is the same as them, but of course it's a six place method. A plain lead will be the same, but a bob lead will be a repeating lead, just like in Bristol Major. So potentially useful, as we'll see shortly. Now, by repeating lead, I mean that the tenors go back to ringing the same lead again. So we're going to move on and look at possible touches. Bear in mind now that leads in treble dodging minor are twice as long, so we don't need as many for a practice night touch. Two courses is quite a long touch of splice surprise. So two course touches, which are shortened, gives us some good options. How I'm going to do this is look at the short touches I most commonly call, when combining these methods, and we'll see why they work. Now, let's revisit that simple touch of plain and little, which usefully gave us calling positions wrong, home, wrong. Sorry, wrong and home. It's a nice equivalent in Surprise Minor. Not quite the same, the three lead course with a wrong and a home in. This course is therefore your friend because you get two different calling positions and only three leads. Now there's an important thing to explain about abbreviations. In touches of spliced, 
We tend to abbreviate all methods down to a single letter, or maybe two. By convention, in plain minor, P and L stand for plain Bob and little Bob. In surprise minor, however, the L stands for London. Altogether more complicated. So our three lead course here is London, Cambridge, London. How can we combine that with other methods? These are methods with the same lead end orders slotting into the same places. So Norwich, Beverly, and Ipswich, again, giving us the opportunity to put in calls at wrong and home. So we could call a six lead, two course touch of spliced by calling London, Cambridge, Bob, London, Bob, Norwich, Beverly, Bob, Ipswich, Bob. Now here's a question. Could you swap the leads of Norwich and Ipswich in this touch? Norwich and Ipswich, after all, have the same lead end orders. Now think to yourself, what happens if you call a Bob at the end of that lead of Norwich, that third lead? It's not going to be a home. It's a six place method. The tenor isn't going to become six place bell because you call a Bob and the tenor dodges back to become fifth place bell again. It's actually going to be a wrong and all of a sudden your touch is in some trouble. You could do this though. You could run past the home and call another Bob lead of Norwich and it'll come round at home a lead later. Quite a nice touch. So my point here is that you need to be very careful with six place methods, but you can also use them to your advantage by using them to, for repeating lead touches in the case of Norwich. I'm now going to look at a couple of callings which I find useful for short touches of spliced. First one is this one, wrong, single wrong. Now, for those of you familiar with coursing order transposition, you can see that this doesn't appear to come round. This touch swaps two and three over. A bob at wrong causes five three two to become three two five. A B C becomes B C A. A single wrong swaps the first three bells in the coursing order. So three two five has become five two three. That doesn't come round. However, this touch uses the feature of methods which are Cambridge above the treble, or more precisely, that start cross three six. That at the backstroke snap after the wrong, two and three are swapped over. So if you ring that lead with the coursing order five two three four six, it will just come round, and you will look like a god. This is quite a useful touch that is between one and two courses. And what I'll often do is call a short course to start with, like that one, London, Cambridge, Bob London. Then, of course, you could ring different methods with the same lead end order here, such as London. Well, in that first course, sorry, you could ring um, leads with a different lead end order. You could have a lead of Beverly or a leader surf lead in the second position. I've picked Cambridge. In the second part of the course, you can have Beverly, Cambridge, surf fleet, takes you to the wrong, single. That will come round two blows later. Those are the base spells that the tenor becomes at the start of each lead, so you can see that that works. And finally, to round this off, we're going to take a look at a few calls. More calls in. And see what the shortest touch is we can call with all the methods we know. This is actually my favourite two course touch. Fourths, wrong home, fourths, wrong home. You might like to pause and check the coursing orders work to prove it to yourself. You may not be familiar with the coursing order for the tenor making the bob, which causes the coursing order 53246 become two, four, five, three, six, wrongs and homes, as you expect. So our first lead we call Cambridge, takes us to making the bob with the first call of fourths. A lead with Cambridge lead end order, 
then takes the tenor up to become fifth place bell, so that gets us to our wrong, and the lead of London takes us from the wrong to the home. So that's our first course. Then we can use our last remaining Cambridge lead and order method, which is Surfleet. That gets us to make the bob again. And then I've been a bit cheeky because Primrose is actually sixth place Cambridge. So that would get us to a wrong as well because bob at the end of a sixth place method is the same as a bob at the end of the second place equivalent. So a bit of a cheat, but it makes us look good. Um, and we finish with our final method, which is the lead of Ipswich, takes us from the wrong to the home. So there you've got touch of six spliced with a call and a change of method every lead. So just to summarise, all the regular methods bring up the same lead ends in the plain course in some order. All regular methods. Second point, you can combine different methods in the plain course and your touch will come round provided the tenor gets back to sixth place. Any touch that works for Bob Minor will work for Spliced. A good starting point. Now you can fit any methods in provided you get the tenor to the next calling position. Three homes is a perfectly acceptable touch. Don't be, uh, don't be embarrassed at calling three homes or indeed three wrongs within a variety. Wrong home, wrong home is your friend. Always a nice two course touch. An LCL, obviously a one course touch, um, but also it's a useful short course which includes um, your calls you want to get to. Remember what happens with calls and six place methods, and you can combine methods with different treble paths. Now we're going to move on to surprise major and focus on putting together short touches of the course ever, which, as you will know, are Cambridge, Yorkshire Superlative, Cornwall, London, Bristol, and Les Ness. And again, we consider which of these methods share the same lead end orders. Cambridge, Yorkshire, and Superlative are the same. London and Les Ness are the same. Bristol is the same as London and Les Ness, but it's an eighth place method, so similar to Norwich's similarity. Cornwall is a bit different, as we'll see in a moment. Now, I'm not going to go through lots and lots of touches here, but it's sufficient to say that the principles we've already been through are the same. We can put touches together of up to seven leads by combining leads with no calls. So, for instance, good news. LCL, and the abbreviations in, uh, in Surprise Major are the same, LCL works. And just look at how many options this gives us. You can have courses with middles, wrongs, they all have homes, of course. Lots and lots of variety. Note how we've already used the letter L for London. So lessness is usually given the letter E. Another good touch that gets used a lot is that wrong, single wrong touch that we saw earlier. Here's a good example. Um, of a touch called wrong, single wrong. So a short course to start with, and then four leads of the same lead end order, Cambridge, Yorkshire, Superlative, Cambridge, to get us to our single wrong at the end. And that will come round two blows after the wrong. Now, why is it good to start with London and then Superlative? Well, firstly, London, worth starting with, especially with a slightly weaker band, because it's high risk. And you get it over with. Unless, of course, you want to practice changing direction in London, um, get it over with at the start. Um, and superlative, you uh, you often ring second like this, so it's the, re the lead that goes from the middle to the wrong, because that lead of superlative is a musical one, includes backgrounds and queens. So we started with that short course, and then four leads, of B group methods, get us to the wrong. Now we haven't used Cornwall yet, so what options? does Cornwall give us? Let's just think about it in blue line terms. Eighth place Cornwall becomes fourth place Bell, or if it was bobbed, eighth place Cornwall becomes sixth, which makes it the same lead end order as Less Ness, London and Bristol, but bobbed. So if a lead of Cornwall has got us to fourth place Bell, we only need one lead of a Cambridge group method for a course. 
Cornwall. The abbreviation C, of course, we've used before, Cambridge. So Cornwall, by convention, is given the letter W. So WC is a court. Again, we're not too proud to call three homes as a touch. So how about this? Three nice short courses. You see, I've used the repeating lead feature of Bristol at the end for that final course. By convention, we put repeating leads on the end of the course rather than on a new line. That's how we tend to tend to learn it as well. So that's London superlative less Ness Bob, Cornwall Yorkshire, Bob Bristol Bob. Now, if we were to take this presentation up a level, we would start looking at which leads of these letters are the ones with the musical rows in. Now, you'll get used to doing that at the moment. I'm just trying to show the principle. But for instance, it's criminal not to have queens in a short touch of spliced surprise major, and it's easy to do with that leader superlative, as we've seen. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with seeing if it is possible to ring a touch of the core seven with only seven leads. Now you might want to pause this and work it out for yourself. The answer is that it's actually pretty difficult. It's relatively easy to do it in eight, but it's difficult to do it in seven. And this is a composition John Morrison came up with, and he makes use of the little known fact that if you're in the coursing order 65234, at the treble backstroke snap after the home in superlative, it will come round and you'd be forgiven for not, uh, not spotting that. If you call that a practice, you will look very clever indeed. So to summarise, the same principles apply with surprise major to surprise minor. All regular methods bring up the same leads in the plain course in some order. You can combine different methods in the plain course and your touch will come round. Any touch that works will work for spliced. You can fit any methods in, provided you get the tenor to the next calling position. Three homes is a perfectly acceptable touch. Wrong home, wrong home is still your friend, as is LSL, which contains, or LCL, because it contains middle, wrong and home positions, and with superlative there, contains queens. Bristol is useful for its repeated lead feature, and getting a touch of the course seven in only seven leads is very hard. And that's it. I hope that was interesting to you, and I hope you're looking forward to putting together your own touches of spliced and calling them.